Okay, so we are going to look at our very muscular man, and right now we're going to look at the most of the muscles in the abdomen. So we're going to see if we can do this in 20 minutes so I can head to the lab. Um, put my name down just so she knows I was there. Anywho, um, so we're going to start with our ab ab uh, abdominal wall, muscles of our abdominal wall, and obviously we know our external abdominal oblique muscle is the most external um for the name it's um its origin ribs 5 to 12 so the last eight of the um of our intercostal ribs so when we look at it it's gonna start from see its insertion from t5 6 7 8 9 10 and 11 that would be our last eight in the costals then five six seven eight nine ten eleven so the last seven in the costals plus our subcostal one so if it's in there it should come out oh, where is the subcostal okay we can't see it but it is in there somewhere let's uh let's put all this stuff back Um, I was messing with it earlier. So, it originated from ribs 5 to 12. Um, it's good to know that. And it inserts at the iliac crest. So, if you take out that, we're going to have a hip bone. So, if we take out a hip bone, we're going to unfold it. This is going to be our iliac. Um, right. So, the iliac crest. It contains the iliac crest, the crista iliacae. Which is the most superior part of this bone, so the top part of it is gonna be uh, iliac crest. Now let's put that back because we're not talking about the hips right now. We're talking about you, and it also inserts at the pubic tubercle and linear alba. So we have our linear alba right down this middle. So you could pull it out and we can put it back in. And it's avascular. That's so that's what that's so as she was saying when you're doing the abdominal surgery, and you split off in the abdomen, you cut along this linear elbow, and there will be minimum bleeding. I wouldn't say no bleeding, but minimum bleeding. Anyway, so we take it out and uh we take uh this hip bone out again and we all fold. We have our pubis and the pubis has the what's that you so pubic tubercle so we'll look at our pubis. It's gonna have um, let's dock it a seven, uh, three parts, and the pubic tubercle. So on the ventral aspects of the superior ramus, we have the pubic tubercle, and you know yada yada yada. But we know that the external abdominal muscle um, inserts at this top, and over here, and on the linear elbow. Can put you back. And we can put you back. And it originates from the first 12. So, its function is to contralateral rotation of the torso. So, if you are, uh, contract, it's going to, depending on where you, uh, which one is flexed, it's going to rotate the torso that way. It also s compresses the abdomen. So, it pulls the abdomen back. Um, yeah, back that way. Pull this side. That way, that will pull that side that way. And it's going to go like that. But to the top. But what we noticed is that um, who am I? Who are you? There we go. Innovation is going to be the thoracal abdominal nerve T seven to T eleven. So if we um, well, to make it quick, we have T seven to eleven is going to be innovations for one, two, and three. Yeah, I think so. Let me see you. It's going to be T7, T11, yep, and T12, definitely subcostal nerve T12. So T7 to T11 of the intercostals and T12, which would be a subcostal because it's not an intercostal. Now we can put those two back, and what we have is the innovation. You. We have the innovation. You already said that. Blood supply. Cranial portion of the muscles supplied by the 
store in a costal artery, so whereas the caudal portion is supplied by the branches of the either the deep circumflex iliac artery or the iliolumbar artery. So we'll get there. They are all like these two ones in the caudal part uh, in the lower aspect of it, and go into the back right here. Um, the deep circumflex and in a costal artery to we'll supply them specifically the uh, superior epigastric um, artery. So we have our external abdominal, and you know she said it kind of runs towards the front, like you're putting your hands in your back pocket. Anywho, and this one runs to the back, which is the internal abdominal oblique muscle. Is the next one, so it runs backwards. It originates from the inguinal ligament so see how like because she says it's like you're putting your hand in the back of your pocket your origin is going to be your shoulders if that's your hand so the origin will be here right so all of this right here will be the origin and i'm guessing the insertion is in the back because it inserts in the linear elbow okay well, that's confusing okay take that back it's gonna be similar to this that when your wrist is will it just insert right there then I guess. Um so the origin for internal abdominal oblique muscle will be the inguinal ligament. So the inguinal ligament will run down this way. And if we see we don't have it here, but would it be connective tissue? This here your genital. Uh, okay internal somatic fascia nope let's do connected tissue inguinal ligament in there right there so if we oops we pull out an inguinal um ligament oops um the internal abdominal oblique muscle inserts on that and also the iliac crest, just like that one. So insert on the iliac crest. See if we can let me put this away. Connective tissue away. And T bone. Skeletal bone. So we already stated that one. And it's also gonna um originate from the lumbodorsal fascia. Okay, so that's what that would be then. Come back here. Come back here. Right on this edge. It's also going to originate from there. So, um, we have the origin and we have the insertion, which would be the insertion on the linear alpha. The pen pectin pubis of the pubis of the bone and in the xiphoid process so the xiphoid oops right here on the xiphoid is where it inserts you can see it up there and inferior ribs so yeah that goes without saying these little projection on here so originate oh i mean it will insert now we move down to the innovation and function so function will do the same thing as uh the external which will be compresses abdomen and then rotates vertebral column so Rotate the vertebral column from the back because it's inserted on the back side of it. Okay. It goes and insert here. So that would help in rotating the vertebral column. Huh? Makes sense. And it compresses the abdomen. So this compresses the abdomen upwards since internal abdominal oblique muscle is inserting to the back of it it's like putting your hands in your back pocket it will compress it down so if it compress it down 
and then you have uh, compression it's gonna be forward no, this going up and this going back and it cancels out so it just compressed backward if that makes sense okay so put a skeletal away we'll put that away and innovation same t7 to t11 okay maybe one more but hey um it's one extra so i don't think anyone would be that specific about the fact that it's t6 and this is t7 but that's good to know um on our notes here t7 to t11 uh, costal nerve subcostal nerve t12 ilio hypogastric nerve and ilio inguinal nerve so these didn't have that uh it's interesting because uh, the nerve will run ilio the ilio hypogastric will run um superficial to this and innovate the front of the, the, the skin overlying the pubis or below the umbilicus so you have that and you have your ilio inguinal as well um, doing that now when we go one layer deeper we have our transversus abdominis muscle and we could pull that out for a sec and very interesting things going on here so originates from the iliac crest we've seen that the inguinal ligament we've also seen that one and the thoracolumbar fascia and costal cartilage t7 to t12 so not so much of the costal ribs itself as in that one where it originated from the ribs of fives it's going to originate from the costal cartilage of um of of these um t7 t12 because um if you if you know the cartilages in here one second the abdominal fascia uh will go to the xiphoid process right here let me take you out of the way so these are the costal cartilages and they extend from the costal the costals and connect to the xiphoid process so we could put you back we could put you deep abdominal fascia back and um you can also go back you know yeah so in the meantime we'll have our connective tissue out then iliac crest iliac lumbar fascia insertion linear alba uh, pectin the pubis life process and the inferior is that the same thing we're looking at no it's not that makes no sense so the xiphoidic process linear elbow pubis pubic crest pectic pubis and the conjunction tendon so it's saying it's gonna insert at the linear elbow and the xiphoid process i think they're the most important ones the pubic crest we've seen that in pectic pubis via conjunction tendon not sure if I want to find that. So its function will be compress the ribs and viscera, providing thoracic and pelvic stability. So it pulls everything backwards. And I said if these two contract, they're gonna result in a contraction similar to this. So we have that. We have our inversion from T6 to T11 or T7 to 11 from the intercostals and the subcostal T12, obviously, ilio hypogastric nerve and our ilio. I'm gonna love L1. And this had, didn't have the numbers, but specifically from L1 to L3. Hmm. One sec. Notes closed. Okay. We could put you back. So one thing she noted was that this was also L1 from the ilio inguinal nerve. And next one we'll talk about will be the rectus abdominis. 
and uh, that is the rectus abdominis, just that, and we have, oh, oh, yeah, one sec, what was interesting about this is, if you see our rectus, our transversus abdominis muscle, see how it transverses inside, so in front, well, I guess behind of the rectus abdominis, right from the top, this part, so until that part then it transverses in front and it joins it joins these two these two bad boys over here and they cover the rectus abdominis so that was what she refers to as or they refer to as the arcuate line it's the line where let me bring it's the line where the the rectus abdominis sheet or the rectus sheet covers just um, the posterior and the anterior part above the aqua line and just the anterior part of the rectus abdominis below the aqua line. So that is pretty much, um, she talks about two more muscles, the pyramidal and the cremaster. I'll find those. Hmm. Hmm. So this is the pyramidalis, the pyramidalis muscle, just a tiny per, uh, muscle here. And what it does is it originates from the pubic crest and pubic symphysis in certain linear alba. Obviously, it's more than this. It probably connects with its connective tissue extending beyond it. And uh, it functions as the tensest inferior portion of the linear alba. So it gives the linear alba some strength. And uh, whoops, what we have here for innovation, it would be the subcostal nerve, which would be T12. And our blood supply would be the superior and inferior epigastric arteries. And we know where those come from. One off of the internal iliac. Okay. Internal iliac and um, internal thoracic. External iliac. Yeah, external iliac, yeah. So we'll put these back and our aqua line we'll, uh, we'll put that back put that back in there so um that's pretty much it with the muscles of the abdominal wall i think the cream master middle of inguinal pubic tubercle and crest gentle femoral rectile Okay, let's see if we can find that one. Our cream muscle, muscle. Yeah, inguinal. It's not that hard. Maybe, maybe to connective tissue. So yeah, we don't have that. That is quite unfortunate, but you know, um, one thing that she talked about was the cream master. So uh, that would be all or unless, let me put the integument on and let's do this. So we are gonna cut our um oh, this is trippy, but so she was speaking and she was showing that the wall of the of the interior abdominal wall has the superficial layer and the deep layer. 
for five years, and um, obviously we have our have our skin. Oof, so trippy. Our skin, and if we move our skin out of the way, we have a linear external abdominal leak. Well, before we get that, uh, maybe I don't have it up. It wouldn't show me the fascia, but I see it right there. So we have our deep, because like we have to go in a little bit further. So then we take off our skin. We can take off our deep superficial fascia first, then our deep abdominal fascia. And what's good to know is that our superficial fascia of the campus fascia and scapus fascia, they can only be found in the abdomen and they are nowhere else besides the abdomen so every area in the body would have our deep um layer of our fascia and that would be all we wouldn't have our campus fascia we would have our scapus fascia but obviously here they put it both together and they didn't um break it down for us so i don't think i can grab any more what is this membranous layer of superficial fascia of abdomen right so i guess it's in there like she only put like they only put like the membranous layer so you have these two fascias there to help protect the abdomen so but that's before you get to the muscles you have your fascias and um yeah and i think you also have your Yeah, after you get your, let me move these out of the way. After you get your muscles out, yeah, you do have another fascia, which would be the transversalis fascia, which would be the innermost part of the um, of the wall before the peritoneum. So they don't have it here, but if they did, that's what we'll have. Okay, that's pretty much all we got for our abdominal wall and next we'll talk about the uh, blood supply we'll talk about the lymphatics we'll talk about the nerves which shouldn't take that much longer oh well, maybe we could squeeze in the nerves in here see okay we're already running past 20 minutes so we're gonna end it here and uh sorry could skip Ooh, i mean it's already at the end so we'll talk about the nerves later yeah.